My name is Rick Brenner, and today I'm seated on a fallen column which once lined this road. This road was covered with beautiful hand-carved marble columns, and this is the Magnesia Road, and that is very important to the New Testament. We read about the Magnesia Road in Acts chapter 19 and verse 1, where the Bible says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus. When the Bible says upper coasts, the Greek word really means Paul re-entered Ephesus by the interior road. The first time he came to Ephesus, he came by ship. But when he returned, he passed through the interior roads, passed through the Magnesia Gate, which was the upper entrance to Ephesus, and walked into the city on this very road. The Apostle Paul really walked on this street. And when he walked on this street, to the left, to the right, there were beautiful columns, there were statues, there were idols. This was a very dark, dark pagan city. And the Apostle Paul, with the help of Aquila and Priscilla, established the church in the heart of this city. And it became one of the greatest churches in all of church history. And eventually, he installed Timothy to be the pastor of this church. And many years later, Paul wrote to Timothy and prophesied to Timothy about what was going to take place in the very end of the last days. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly, the Greek word retus means the Spirit speaks emphatically, categorically, no ability to misconfuse what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of demons. The Apostle Paul, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writing to Timothy, who was the pastor in this very city, said, Timothy, at the very end of the age, when the age can go no further, when the church age is wrapping up, many in the church are going to be led astray by what he calls seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. That word doctrines is from the Greek word didaskalia. It describes very well packaged teaching. It will probably be very appealing. It may sound logical, maybe even intelligent. But Paul says, make no mistake, it will be well packaged doctrines of demons. And he says it will be very seducing. That's what Paul prophesied to Timothy about what would take place in the church worldwide at the very end of the age. That's our time. We're living at the very end of the age. And my friend, just like Paul prophesied, seducing spirits with doctrines of demons have been released into the earth, and people today are believing delusional things that don't even begin to match reality. We need to keep our heads on straight when it comes to what we believe. It is so very important for us who are living at the end of the age. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to today's program. As I told you in the introduction today, we're going to be talking about an invasion of seducing spirits and doctrines of demons which the Bible prophesied would enter the world at the very end of the age. And I want to tell you right up front that I'm speaking from my brand new book. Brand new, and I want you to have a copy of it. It's called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. Do you ever think, my goodness, what has happened to society? What are people thinking? How can people be so crazy in their conclusions? Well, the Bible prophesied at the end of the age, spirits of delusion would enter the world, and we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. I document it in this book. The subtitle of this book says, Developing Discernment for These Last Times. The purpose of the book is how to keep your head on straight. Just because everybody else is living in a delusion does not mean you have to live in a delusion. God wants you to keep your head on straight. I believe this may be the most important book I've ever written and I want you to have a copy of it. And in this series, I'm teaching this book, and we're offering you our series by the same name, How to Keep Your Head on Straight 
in a world gone crazy. It's 15 parts. It comes in multiple formats. You can order it right on our website. I know this is going to be a blessing to you. Today, I'm going to speak to you about how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. Does it ever seem to you the world has gone crazy? Oh, sometimes I see things on the news and I think, what in the world are people thinking? What has happened to common sense? It seems like common sense has been thrown to the wind. People are believing things that don't even begin to match reality. What has happened that people would live with such delusional thinking? Well, the Bible prophesied this would happen at the very end of the age. In fact, both the Apostle Paul and Jesus said it would be the primary sign to let us know that we are right at the outer rim of the church age. That is where we're living today. That's the age. That's the period. We're living in the days just before Jesus comes. And that's why we're seeing such widespread delusion in society. And unfortunately, it's even trying to get inside the church. And we need to do everything we can to keep the lunacy out of the church. But for these programs, I've invited a special guest. For the very first time in my program, I have a guest. And the guest is Sister Denise Renner. Denise, welcome to the program. Rick, thank you for inviting me to be on your program. And it's truly an honor. And I love this subject. And I think we need to know all we can about it. Well, you and I talk about this all the time because we're amazed, especially what we see in the Western world. You know, Denise and I live in the Eastern world. We live in Russia. And in Russia, people really operate by common sense. Reason is really supreme. And people really have their heads on straight about gender, about the roles of men and women, the roles of family and society. And sometimes when we hear the nonsense coming out of the West, it is just shocking to us. And of course, I cover all of this in my book called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. You need to order that book. But today, we're going to jump right into 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, where the Holy Spirit, speaking through the Apostle Paul, prophesies what's going to happen at the very end of the age. And actually, the New Testament is loaded with prophecies that have to do with delusional spirits working in society and trying to work in the church at the very end of this age. So, let's reach for our Bibles. Denise, you got your Bible? Got my Bible. Reach for your Bible, get a cup of coffee, get something to drink, and let's go right to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. This must have been pretty shocking for Timothy, because even in his own time, he was already dealing with seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. You have to remember that the early church was born into a world of paganism, where there was all kinds of demonic activity and false gods and idol worship, so many strange doctrines of demons. Yet the Holy Spirit spoke in this verse and spoke in comparative language. It was almost the equivalent of St. Timothy. If you think you're dealing with issues today, wait till you see what's going to happen at the very, very end of the age. At the end of the age, there's going to be an insidious plot that's going to be released against society and against the church beyond anything you have ever faced. So when we come to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, of course the Apostle Paul is writing, but through him, the Holy Spirit points his prophetic finger 2,000 years into the future and prophesies what is going to take place at the very end of the age. So now let's look again at this verse. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, and let's see what the Holy Spirit says. In this verse, the Holy Spirit says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. When the Bible says the Spirit speaks expressly, this phrase in Greek is the word retus. It's where we get the word rhema. It describes something that is explicitly stated something that is undeniable. I'm going to read you directly from my notes. Something spoken clearly, unmistakably, and vividly. Or something that is unquestionable, certain, and sure. And by using the word retus, listen carefully, the Holy Spirit makes His point unequivocally clear. The events He is about to describe in this verse are not optional. They are definite. They are really going to come to pass. They will surely come to pass, and therefore the Holy Spirit speaks retus 
in undeniable terms. And actually, you could translate the verse like this. Now, the Spirit speaks in absolutely clear words. Or, now the Spirit speaks in unmistakable terms. Or, you could translate it, now the Spirit speaks in the strongest and clearest of language. So now, what the Holy Spirit is going to say is so important that He makes His point absolutely clear. There is no ability to confuse what He says in this verse. The word retus, to speak in undeniable terms, the strongest and clearest of language. He's describing something definite that surely will come to pass. And the verse says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. When the Bible says latter times, even this is important. The word latter is the Greek word husteros. Now, there are several words that could have been used here, but the word husteros describes the very, very end of a thing when there's nothing left over. In other words, the Holy Spirit's pointing to the very end of the age when there's no more time, there's nothing left over, you've come to the very, very end, and the word times is the Greek word kairos, and the word kairos describes a season. Well, when you take these two words together, husteros kairos, it really describes the very, very last season or the very end of the church age. So now the Holy Spirit is telling us one of the signals that will tell us we're living in the very, very end of the age. When we're living in the very end of the age, spirits of delusion will be released in the earth. Isn't that amazing, Denise? Rick, that sounds like that's where we are, right at the very end, the very, very, very end. Well, we are. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And Denise, I think it's so encouraging. It doesn't say everybody's going to depart from the faith. There's a lot of people really pressing into the faith and pressing into the Bible, and we're very grateful for that. But this verse says, some shall depart. And isn't that interesting? Because in this verse, the Holy Spirit is speaking futuristically. He's pointing to the end of the age. Shall depart. That word, depart, is also very, very important. It is the Greek word, aphistomy. And I want to read to you directly from my notes what the word depart means. This is very important to this verse. The word aphistomy is a compound of the word apo and histomy. Apo means away and histomy means to stand. But when compounded, they form the word aphistomy, which means to stand apart from, to distance oneself from, to step away from, to withdraw from, to shrink away from. And it is this very Greek word from which we derive the word apostate, or apostasy. So when the Holy Spirit talks about some shall depart from the faith, this departing depicts a departure that takes place very slowly over a period of time, and it pictures a person who changes his position and withdraws from what he once believed. This departure occurs so gradually that those who are in the process of departing may not even realize they are in transition. This is not a rejection of faith. This is a departure from the faith. This departure occurs so gradually that little by little, bit by bit, bit, they're backing away from what they once believed and they're moving towards something very different. This means that departing the Holy Spirit prophesied in this verse does not refer to a blatant outright rejection of the faith. It describes something much more subtle than that. It depicts a gradual, step-by-step, step-by-step, almost unnoticeable departure that occurs over a period of time, a very slow withdrawing and change of position. That's what the Holy Spirit's prophesying in this verse. And look what else it says. It says, some shall depart from the faith. Well, very interesting that in Greek, the faith has a definite article that is profoundly important. That tells us this word faith does not refer to faith for miracles or faith for finances or faith for the miraculous or faith for anything. It's talking about the faith. The definite article means it is describing doctrine or the long-held, time-tested teachings of Scripture. And according to this verse, what the Holy Spirit is prophesying, this means at the very end of the age, there will be some, not everyone, but a notable some, who will begin to depart 
from the clear teaching of Scripture, little by little distancing themselves from God's truth to embrace something new that has captured their attention. Listen very careful to these words. Again, this does not mean people will outright reject the faith. It says they will depart from the faith. There's a big difference between rejecting and departing. Rejecting is deliberate. Departing is slow and can even be unintentional. People that are slowly distancing themselves from what they once believed, they're shrinking back from positions they once held, and the Bible says they're doing it because they're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Well, what does that mean, giving heed? It's the Greek word pros echo. It's a compound of two words. The word pros means to lean towards something, and the word echo means to hold or to embrace. And in this verse, it pictures those who believed one thing for a very long time, but now they're leaning in a new direction. They're leaning in a new direction because of some influence on them. They're now changing their positions. They're gradually releasing what they formerly believed, and they're switching their focus towards something else. You know, Rick, can I say something? Sure. Here? Because you're saying that they're leaning forward, and I'm thinking about those who do not depart from the faith. We're going to have to lean more forward to the Word of God and to know what the Holy Spirit is saying, to know Him more intimately so that we understand Him better and don't depart. Well, that's absolutely right. But in this verse, he's talking about people that are departing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really our focus. And it pictures people that are slowly releasing what once was familiar, precious, and dear. They once adhered to it. They once believed it. They once stood on it. But now very slowly, they're withdrawing from it. They're releasing it. They're shrinking away from it. And they're turning their thoughts to new possibilities, new systems of believing. Now, the question is, what influence is causing people to leave the clear teaching of Scripture? What is this outside influence that's drawing them away to change their position. And the Apostle Paul gives us the answer in this verse. He says, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. The word seducing is the Greek word planal. Listen to what it means. This word planal describes a deception or a moral wandering. Isn't that amazing, Denise? What we believe affects our lifestyle. And in this case, we find people deceived begin to morally wander. It depicts a person or nation, a person or nation, who has veered from a solid path. As a result of veering morally, they are now adrift. The same word is used to depict a lost animal that cannot find its path. It means to morally lose one's bearing or to wander off course morally. Now, that is exactly the nonsense we're seeing in society today. People have lost their senses when it comes to what is right and wrong. And do you know that's exactly what Isaiah prophesied? In Isaiah chapter 5, he said, At the end of the age, people will become so morally confused, they will call evil good, and they will call good evil. It describes a day when society will just become morally adrift. That is the time we're living in, my friend. And the Bible says it is a result of seducing spirits, seducing, trying to lead people off track, to lead the solid path they once walked upon, leading them in another direction. And the Bible says this error will be packaged as seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. The word doctrines is the Greek word didaskalia. The word didaskalia describes very well-refined teaching, very well-packaged teaching, in other words, when it's presented, the error will sound logical. The error will appeal to the flesh. People will listen to it and say, wow, that's a possibility. Maybe I should consider. But Paul says, make no mistake, behind that well-packaged new system of thought that is being promoted is the activity of demons. The word demons, the Greek word daimonion. It literally describes evil spirits, demons, devils, and the ancient world generally believed that demons thickly populated the lower regions of the air and that these spirits were the primary cause of disaster, suffering, and actions of insanity. Insanity. 
That's why I say to you, you need to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. A lot of the crazy craziness that's worming its way into society today is a result of seducing spirits that have been released into the world at the end of the age. Now, why at the end of the age? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in the next program. But today, there really has been an invasion of seducing spirits, and they're speaking through society, they're speaking through the courts, they're speaking through the medical profession, they're speaking through science, they're speaking through education, really targeting especially the younger generation to modify what they believe morally, to abandon what they have believed biblically, such well-packaged nonsense. And the Apostle Paul prophesied this would occur in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. So let's read the whole verse again. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. But I really like what Denise said. Those of us that are not departing, we need to really press into truth. That was a great word, Denise. No, oh, thank you, Rick. I, you know, I'm just thinking because it says deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So we, it, there's going to be deception. People are going to be doing things that they do not. They're going to be deceived. They don't know that they should not be doing that. They're going to believe this well-packaged thing that you're talking about. And we've just got to know Jesus better and better and better. Well, we've got to know the Bible. And yes. Because when you know the Bible, it gives you the ability to judge what's right and what's wrong. This is and our that's stability. What we're see, that's what we're going to see in the next program. This is we've our got stability. to stick with the Bible. That's right. But Denise, we're out of time. Oh, that went fast. It's been great to be with you. And I want to tell you that you really need this book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. It really will help you be fixed. It will help you be rooted in Scripture and have the ability to recognize what is right and what is wrong. And that's very important for us that are living in the end of the age because seducing spirits are at work. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. The world is changing. In fact, it's more than changed. It's gone crazy. We are living in a world where faith is questioned and sin is welcome, where people seem to have lost their minds about what is right and wrong. It seems truth has been turned upside down. In Rick Renner's new book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, Rick reveals the disastrous consequences of a society in spiritual and moral collapse. In this book, you'll discover what Christians need to be doing to stay out of the chaos and anchor to truth. You'll learn how to stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit, discern right and wrong teaching, how to be grounded in prayer, and how to be spiritually prepared for living in victory in these last days. Leading ministers from around the world are calling this book essential for every believer. And right now, it's available for just $15 online and in stores wherever books are sold. You can also order the 15-part teaching series when you call or go online right now. Rick takes you deep into New Testament prophecies about the end of the age and what you need to do to sail successfully through turbulent end-time waters. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. Get the book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, for just $15, online and in stores, wherever books are sold. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call now, 1-800-742-5593, or go to renner.org to order. Get yours today. My name is Joe Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you for watching today and thank you for your support. It's because of ministry partners like you that we're able to distribute quality Bible teaching around the world. And because of your support, we're not only able to air these programs by television, we're also able to translate Christian books into other languages. Because of your financial support, people in areas who have no Christian teaching of any kind, in places where getting a Bible is very difficult, we have been able to distribute millions of these Christian teachings around the world. The Bible says if you know the truth, it will set you free. And we have seen this happen over and over again. We have received thousands of testimonies of how these books we've distributed have dramatically changed people's lives. This is all because of the generous support of our partners, partners like you. Will you consider joining this vision today? Would you consider becoming a partner with us right now? When you do, your help allows us to reach more people quality Bible teaching from God's Word. With your help together, we can take the gospel of Christ both to the nearby world and to the ends of the earth. That's the vision. Your gift of any size will support these essential and urgent work 
of getting the Bible and Christian resources into the hands of people who don't have access to it. Please call right now, 1-800-742-5593 or go online to reno.org. Through your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives. It has been so good to be with you today with Denise. We have really enjoyed opening the Bible with you. We're looking at how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. Don't miss any of these programs in this series because we're looking what the Bible has to say about events that are going to take place at the very end of the age. And we're living in that age, so we need to know how to respond. You know, nothing in the Bible is written to scare us. It's written to prepare us and to equip us. And if we'll pay attention to Scripture, it will equip us to be victorious even in the very end of the age. By the way, I'm speaking to you from my book, which is called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, Developing Discernment for These Last Days. Order your copy. This is a book you're going to be really glad you got a hold of. We're also offering you our series by the same title, 15 Parts, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. It's based on these programs. It comes in multiple formats. You can get all of this by going to our website. And if you need prayer, remember that we're here for you. We would love to put our faith with you. We're waiting for the phone to ring so we can pray with you right now. But Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the wonderful Word of God. We thank you that you did not lead us alone, but you've given us the Word. You've given us the power of the Holy Spirit. We have everything we need to sail through this season successfully and with power. We thank you for this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's been such a pleasure to be with you. And when we come back, we're going to see what Jesus had to say about the end of the age. Jesus had a lot to say about one of the main signs that would alert us that we're living in the very end of the age. But as I close, I want to remind you of Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Let God's word release its power in your life today. And I'll see you in the next program. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.